this video, I'd like to go ahead and start talking about how particle systems have changed in Unreal Engine 5.x. In previous versions of Unreal, what we were able to do was whenever we would right-click in our content area, you'd see the Create Basic Assets, and one of the things you would see up here is Particle Systems. However, now Unreal 5.x has switched to a Niagara system, which allows you to combine emitters and gives you a little bit more oomph as far as the particle systems go. While you do lose the simplicity of the original particle systems in 4.2x, you now have a lot more options and also as well a lot more control as far as what you can add out of the gates to the new particle systems. Now one thing to note with this as well is it does adopt kind of a blueprint mentality. So if you are comfortable working with things like materials, the audio connectors and blueprints, this should look very familiar to you as far as creating particle systems. So if I go ahead and actually select the system here, what's also really nice is it will actually make a wizard window pop up where you can just click through and choose what you want to start with. For demonstration's sake for this video, I'm going to go ahead and choose a new system from selected emitters. And what's really nice about this is you actually have numerous starting points that you can work with from the library. So for instance, you have templates uh, as far as just starting points. You can also set up as far as parent emitters, if you choose in the future that you can choose to have the parent child elements there. And also here, you have numerous behavior examples on how to guide each of the Niagara works. So each of these can help as far as if you have some more advanced ideas that you would like to implement as far as the different outputs are concerned. However, for this video's sake, I'm going to go ahead and start with the templates here. These are your simple starting points that can get you kind of back to it for those of you who might have been familiar with the original Unreal 4.2x particle systems. This is where you can kind of get started again. Now, the first thing that you have to do is you want to determine what type of particle systems that you are going to want to work with. Each one provides you with a name and then a description. So I like to start out whenever I'm demonstrating this, I start with the fountain. Now, down at the bottom of the window though, notice there's an emitters to add and then a plus symbol. You can actually have multiple emitters in a single Niagara system. However, for our starting here, I'm just going to hit plus to add the fountain and I'm going to tell it to finish. So now you have a new system that's placed into your content browser, honestly very similar to the particle systems uh, if you worked with the previous versions. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to actually rename this just to fountain demo. And what I'm going to do is just click and drag and drop the particle system into the environment here. And there you go. You have a nice clean particle system right out of the gate. Now one thing that I like to show my students though is as you're working, you're going to want to make edits to this particle system. However, you probably don't want this running constantly while you are making the edits in the sub window for the Niagara system. So what you can do is under the show drop down menu here, you can actually uncheck particle sprites. So even though it will show you the location of where you placed your particle system, you're not going to have that constant playing. Now if I double click here on my new particle system, notice that I actually do get a preview window out of the gate here. So that's why I normally encourage folks to turn it off in your game level while you're making the edits and then do a compile and turn it back on. Now when you're starting out here, you actually have two items here. You have the default as far as the name and the general properties for the user parameters for the system. But then this is kind of where all of the magic happens is this giant the fountain element itself here where you have as far as things like your color, the particle systems, the spawns, the emitters, etc. that you can go in and actually edit. Now a couple of other things that are new to this system as well as you dive in deeper, number one on the side here, you do have specific system attributes that can be set. 
You can even come in here under particle attributes and you can see as far as, you know, particle system and age, and it actually gives you descriptions for each of the elements here. Now, another thing too that you get down at the bottom here is you do get your tracking system as far as the timeline goes. Notice that right now it's showing me from negative 10 till about 11-ish seconds. I can change as far as the range of how long this repeats on itself. So there you can see I've shaved now as far as the particle repeating down to about 9 seconds. Another thing I like to point out frequently to students whenever they're starting out with the new system is right down at the bottom here as well, along with the timeline, you do have your control buttons, one of which is pause, so that maybe if you need to pause a second, but also to this button right here, as far as the looping playback range. By default, whenever you're working, you sometimes wanna make sure that you can loop and you're testing as far as the different settings. Normally when you're working with a particle system, what will happen is you'll set a setting, but then it will not actually take effect until the playback head here gets all the way to the end and then loops all the way back to the beginning. So if you change it where you have no looping, it will only play through once and you'll have to keep hitting the play button. So for instance, now if I go back to the front and I say play, I can see my particle system going through and playing here. But once it hits the nine second marker, you see how it just stops playing for me there. And that's something important to point out because one of the settings that you can set for a particle system is that it would loop infinitely. So I'm gonna go ahead though, just because I prefer that workflow, I like to have it looping as I'm doing edits and things like that. Which brings me into now working within the actual node itself. Now you have two options here of working in the node. The first one is, is you can just click on it and over in selection here, you're gonna get a huge long area here that you know you can see I, I'm actually middle mouse wheeling through here. You get a ton of information. I am gonna start off kind of you know keeping it simple for folks as far as getting started, but just to take you through some of the specific elements here. If you prefer or you know what you're looking for, you can actually come under the node itself and just click on the area that you need to work with. And notice now on the selection side, as I click through each of these, so for instance, as far as emitter state and update, notice that it not only gives you information as far as the state itself, but here, for example, is like looping behavior. So right now I have this set to infinite. And it also gives you some additional information here. Overall, as far as things that I have worked with, I rarely, if ever, find a need as far as the looping behavior to go to something else other than infinite, or more specifically, actually, into multiple. Infinite, I like to use for things like flames and smoke, etc. You also have a spawn rate. I like to point out spawn rate to folks who are new to working with particle systems because this can actually get a little dangerous as far as your computer system is concerned. So let me go ahead and hit play here. So right now, per the single second, I am asking the particle system to spawn 90 particles. So let's go ahead and crank this to say 500. You see how now, coming from that starting point, I have a lot more particles that are shooting out as far as the system is concerned here. You can keep going higher. So I could go to maybe 1,000, for instance. Getting a lot more particles there. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna shave this back down to actually 150. And what you can track also, if you are really interested in the numbers, is up on the top here, you can actually see the number of particles that are live as it is spawning here. So over time, it is keeping at about 150, but because it takes so long for them to die off, you can see that we get more into the 250s as far as the display goes. So again, that's under your spawn rate, and more specifically, the emitter updates. So let's talk about particle spawning a little bit here. Lifetime mode, 
Random is absolutely fine. Random will mean that you can set a min and maximum amount as far as how long a particle is going to live, more or less, or be present in the scene. I could actually shave this down to say one second and my lifetime minimum to 0.5. And you see how quickly I no longer have that big drop going on as far as the particle system goes. So I could maybe change this to 1.5. and Maybe now we change the lifetime max to, I don't know, 3.0. So there you see now I have a much longer stretch as far as the overall design goes. If you're looking for a quick fix, uh, you do have your color modes available to you. So I can come under here, I can click, and I can do, you know, a whole different color here if I want. So do a much deeper color. Tell it OK. You can also change as far as your mass of your solver. So there you can see as far as the spread out, and maybe I put this to 50. Kind of getting that heavier drop going on for each of your circles there. So you do already have like a lot of things that you can play with right out of the gate just in this single element here. Uh, let's see here, some of the other things that you can do. You also have your sprite size as far as the minimum and the maximum size that a sprite could be. I mean, so I guess if we go to 50, you see that now I have a much broader range as far as the sprites are concerned that are being shown here. Uh, also too, as far as shapes are concerned, you can use a sphere, but we could also do toros as far as the display is concerned. And what's neat about the shape is how it appears. So let me actually go ahead here. I'm going to save a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of shrink this down just so you can see. If I go ahead and reshow this now, what's fun with the shapes here Okay, so kind of hard to do this with multiple windows here. But there you can see as far as my shape is concerned. So I have the toros. And you see as I spread it out further as far as the radius goes. So maybe let's do something really wide. But there we go. You see that I can actually change on the fly as far as, you know, do I want a different shape? A lot of folks stick just to the sphere out of the gate as far as, you know, so, but I could change the radius to maybe like 25 as far as the spread. So you have some uh, different options there as far as when you are designing your scene and how you want the particle system to appear. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off there and come back into our settings here. And then outside of that, you also have, uh, you know, gravity force. By default, you have the Z value of negative 980. I could also change this. I could have it, as you can see, no gravity force. It goes straight up. I could have a Y value of 90. We could actually do maybe negative 980 on the X, and you can see how it's kind of pulling it off to the side there. So you have some different options as far as being able to control just in this singular node here. And then also, too, if you want to or you want to change your materials and you're not happy with the sp default sprite, you do have the option under Sprite Renderer that you can come in and actually change through. Similar to other materials, once again, you're going to want to work as far as alpha values. Black is what is going to be masked. Meanwhile, on the flip side, anything that you have that is not black will show based on the material layout that you do in Unreal. So you do have this option available to you if you'd like to work with that. So I'm going to go ahead and save, do a quick compile. It says I'm good to go. And now let's go ahead. We're going to show particle system and I'm going to hit play. And now you can see how my particle system is reacting here as far as 
where it's starting and how long it is living until it ends. But that is just the basics of one of the many forms that you can do with the new particle systems or the Niagara systems as far as the Unreal game engine is concerned.